in a little while. We need mutual assent. And if you have background noise, uh, just mute yourself, please. Mutual assent expressed by a valid offer and acceptance. Adequate consideration. What is consideration? Does anybody know? In a unilateral contract, do we need consideration? Something of value. Earnest money. Earnest money or can be performance. Hey, you know what? You let me move in your house. I'll, I'll paint the house for you. Is, that's a performance. That could be consideration. But usually it's money. We want to make money. So you got, in order for a contract to be legal, there has to be some consideration. You get, I give you house, you give me money. You give me house, I give you some money. These gurus who, by the way, this is important. Some gurus talk about doing $1 deals and things like that. Check the laws in your state. There is something called insufficient consideration. And if you get a soft heart, you get somebody, you do an option with somebody, the property goes up $100,000. The person doesn't want to sell you the home. You go to court and the, the judge says, what was the consideration? You say, oh, well, I gave him a dollar. And that judge is looking at that crying poor soul who's lost $100,000. Guess what might happen to your contract? Have sufficient consideration, check the law there. Uh, why should we when, why should we use contracts? Anybody? Why should we use a contract? Can't we just handshake, make a verbal agreement all day long in real estate? Heck, for both it. parties. To make it legally binding. Make it legally. Yeah, you want to have. Go ahead. Well, I'm going to say, you know, <laughs> have you know, uh, equitable consideration in the property, right? Equitable or or sufficient consideration in the property. We should use yeah. contracts though. Why we should use them is that protects us. When you make an agreement with somebody, put it in writing right away, send it to them, DocuSign, hello sign, set a time frame to have them return it. We've done plenty of role plays on that. Okay, guys. Um, we should always use a contract right away. Sometimes you may not be at that point in the negotiation and we might talk about the uh, letter of intent. We have, uh, I'll talk about that in a little while too, if we have time. Can we use a contract to close somebody? Let's talk about closing. When we're negotiating with somebody, can we use a contract to close? What would that sound like? Who's gonna role play with me here? Give me a hand. Mr. Cash Offer, you're way too quiet. No, he's on the phone. Somebody else, Luke Quinall, Bill Pinnell, somebody unmute yourself. Go ahead, Claude, I'll do it. Okay, well, let me go to Bill here, finally. I got, uh, and then I'll do you next, um, uh, Bill, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed this conversation with you. I'm, I'm really excited about your home and everything. Um, can, and uh, we've, uh, we've discussed the price and the rent and the option money and everything. Can I, suppose I put this all in an agreement today I know but off the role play, I don't say contract. I use the word agreement. It's a little okay. softer. Yeah, okay. Bill, if I put this in, if I put this in an agreement to you today and I send it to you through, are you familiar with HelloSign or DocuSign, Mr. Pinnell? Yes, DocuSign, uh, I, very familiar. Yeah, I've really enjoyed this uh, thing and I'm, I'm ready. Uh, I've made a decision. I want to do this deal. If I put everything, the price that we discussed, 200,000, 1,500 a month, 5,000 down on a three-year contract. Are, you're comfortable, are you comfortable with all that, sir, that, what, which we discussed? Yes, I am. I, I would definitely you, like to see it in the contract. I'm going to send it to you right now. It's going to be a two-page agreement. It's going to be an offer sales agreement. It's going to be very simple, just no tricks. Very simple. Anything you need to discuss, we can we can talk about it in two hours on Zoom. Is that fair? That sounds very fair. And if everything meets sure. with your and if you if everything meets with your approval, what happens on the next phone call? We can go ahead with the sale. Is that yes? I'm sorry, I had trouble hearing. Yes. You. Oh, thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you. Always go for the yes. Not the little other things they say then. Bill did that very well, by the way. Thank you, Bill. Okay, we, so we can use contracts. Mr. Prospect, if I put that in writing and send to you in the next 30 minutes, what would happen next? Use contracts to close sometimes. Purpose of a written contract is to provide certainty as to what has been agreed to. The, price of, the process of writing and negotiating the contract can be invaluable in drawing out each other's party's motivations and requirements. Yeah, this is the most important part. 
A contract does not have to be complicated. How long should a good contract be in my world? What, how long do you think a contract should be? 20, 30 pages? Less is more. Two pages is a sweet spot. Two pages and use large type. You're dealing with senior citizens. Should you use a 10 point font or an 18? 18. Make it large, especially if you're dealing with people who were site challenged or a little older or something like that. Make it easy for them and send it to them through a professional service. DocuSign, I like HelloSign because it works really well with Dropbox, which you guys know I used, okay? So that's your basic contract. Let's talk about the content. Any questions, jump in here real fast. Anybody before I move on? Okay, we'll go to content. Can I, can I write a contract on a napkin, true or false? True. Can I write a contract? I have one around here somewhere. I don't know where I put it. <laughs> can you're on a bar? You're in a bar, okay? Nathan Piles are in a, uh, and I are sitting on a bar, and we've had only one drink because he can get out. Can a person get out of a contract if they're inebriated? By the way, uh, I think so. I don't know. Yes, they could use that. There's a lot of. There's more ways to get into a out of a contract than to make it a solid contract. Okay, so if someone says they were drinking smoking something strange um to under medication under stress uh okay their their chihuahua is all pooped at the same time under the christmas tree can they get out of that can they possibly void that contract yeah yes they can that was a bad visual 10 chihuahuas pooping under the christmas tree that's a that's a really bad visual and randy poor randy's eating right now too sorry if i ruined your appetite buddy okay content a contract our verbal agreements, enfor this is a biggie now. Our verbal agreements enforceable in real estate. No kids. No. Okay. Verbal agreements, most agreements, can you no. do, our verbal agreements, other than real estate, are verbal agreements enforceable for a car, um, a computer, a cheeseburger? Are, do we do verbal agreements all day long? Yeah. Are they enforceable? Yeah. Yeah. They could be, but it's very risky. Why? Well, because you could say that you offered to pay X amount and you change your mind. And if it's not on paper, how do I prove it? That's right. So you, uh, when you do a verbal agreement, it's a, it, it's, it's worth, the old joke is it's not worth the paper it's written on. Okay. So make sure uh, if you can have a witness, uh, if you can take, how many people here, when you're negotiating, you take your iPhone and you tell a prospect, hey, why don't we record this? Because sometimes I forget things and I want to make sure we have all the numbers and, and everything and the dates and every, and the time frame. And I'll send you a copy of this recording. Is that all right, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect? And they say yes on the recording. You now have pretty good prima facie uh, evidence there, smoking gun. You have consent. You got verbal consent too, because Absolutely. that's super important with uh, recorded communications, calls, everything. Absolutely. Show, remove your head there, Felipe. Show everybody that great background you have. You got a great background there. Perfect. Perfect. My, <laughs> my favorite character of all Christmas. Oh, yeah. Who played, uh, who played um, uh, the Grinch, uh, Carrie? Jim Carrey? Jim Carrey. Jim One Carrey. of the great, I mean, it's a funny, he's phenomenal in that movie. I don't think it was a big, I don't know, was that a hit, that movie, or was it a flop? I think it was a hit. It's, 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 a hard, hit. it's hard to make money when you're paying the guy $15 million, right? Or 20, oh, yeah. Or, think, or, yeah. Or, or, or 20. What should be in a contract? What should a contract? Here's a mnemonic, Q-tips, okay? You know those little things? Okay, first of all, the quantity. Are we talking about one property or 20 chihuahuas? Um, the time of performance, How have, we always talk about time. When can I move into the house? When is this deal consummated? Always have the time. Identify the parties. Is it a person, a sole proprietor, uh, LLC, an S corp, a C corp, a trust? Make sure you identify. By the way, when you do real estate deals, what kind of entity should you always do your business in? LLC or a trust. LLC. Um, I use an S corp. I have I have had an S a Delaware S corp for I don't know 25 years now. 
Um, I, I like I like Delaware. It offers a lot of protection and things like that. Okay, so I de don't don't do the deals in your own name. Why? You don't want to be personal liable. Yeah, liable. you don't want to be personal liable. If you have assets, if you own a house, if you have savings, if you own a Remington um, statue, if you own gold coins, a, a collection, or you, you you have a regular job that could be garnished. All that can happen. <coughs> We're in a little. about Nathan. So I was going to say, Claude, uh, exposure. You open yourself up. You can open yourself up. It's a pri there's privacy issues. You're correct. Um, also on that. But the thing is, uh, and also for tax reasons, do it through a corporation. You can write off stuff too. If the business, you know, especially in real estate, can you write, can you depre appreciate the property and things like that? You want to do that all through your corporation. Um, the price on the tips, Q-tips still we're talking about. The P stands for the price. We have to have the price in there. And we have to have a description of the subject matter. What are we talking about? Don't just put the property in uh, Virginia City, Virginia. Okay, you gotta put 121 Main Street and put the pin or the parcel identification number always in there because there might, sometimes in a town, have you seen this where you have the same properties at the same address, but one's east or west or north or south, make sure you use the tax code, the tax number or the ID number on the property. Uh, Quick, quick question, maybe from one recovering law student uh, to a recovering attorney. Um, should, because it depends on the state, the, the consideration should be there too. Maybe the, the escrow deposit or, because some, some states, you know, if you don't have, it, it can, if, you, if the seller tries to back out of the deal, they, they might, the judge might give you a hard time for that. Absolutely, but you came in late. We, we had that discussion already. So sorry, my apologies. It's okay. You got to have su sufficient consideration. Insufficient consideration can take you out of the contract. It can void it. It can null and void it. So make sure you, you study the, con as you said, the con sufficient consideration. Um, so cash or performance. Signatures. All the pertinent parties, need, you need signatures. Should you have it notarized? I believe have it witnessed, a reliable witness, or even better yet, Go to your local bank or credit union. My, I belong to a credit Mission Valley credit, a Mission Federal Credit Union. They do notarization for free for me as a credit union member. Okay, if you belong to the auto club in some states, they will do notary for free. Okay, things like that. Get it notarized. They, there's even things called, um, uh, who here has you ever used a mobile notary? You call their 800 number up, they come right to the house. Okay, and in these COVID times, they come, they'll come to you and they'll notarize it right there on, right against the van there or whatever. Get used, make sure you always have it notarized. What, what's the word? Did anyone here ever do a contract and the next day there was a thing, that horrible thing called buyer's remorse? Did anyone besides me ever experience that? It, it sucks, doesn't it? It broke your heart because you spent the money already, didn't you? Okay, so make sure if you have it notarized, give me a role play here. Nathan, can I do a role play with you? Yes. Nathan, yes. you want to get out of the contract. We just did a contract, okay, and uh, there's no grace period or anything. Next morning, your wife's mad at me. Why did you do that? Go ahead. Give me that. Give me some shit. You know, uh, you know, Claude, here's the thing. I mean, I was talking to my wife last night, and she was pretty upset. You know, I mean, we're, we're kind of strong financially right now in the whole thing, and, and uh, you know, we, we tried all this stuff, and so, you know, I'm, I'm, I hate to tell you this, but you know, we, we can't move forward. I mean, I, my marriage is on the line here, Claude. You know, you can appreciate that, can't you? No. Oh, you can't? You're, you're obviously <laughs> under the misapprehension that I care. <laughs> Sir, do you see this agreement? Uh, were you, under, yeah. the, were you under, under the influence of drugs or alcohol yesterday when you signed it? No, 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 no I wasn't. No, okay. I wasn't. Do you like remember that. the notary that we... You remember the notary that certified your signature down here? Oh yeah, I remember that. Okay, I understand, and I'm sorry your wife is mad at you, but this is business. Now let me ask you this, uh, and I'm just saying, imagine for a moment I'd let you out of this contract. What are you offering me in return to rip it up? Well, I'm just hoping you kind of, you know, I mean, you were wrong. Pretty mad right now. You were hoping wrong, sir. I'm a Grinch. <laughs> okay, good. I'll... Okay. So, sir, I'll tell you what, you either, we need delivery of the house 
uh, or on, on January 1st, as we agreed, where you need to give me $10,000, or we need to go to court where you'll pay my legal fees, because I had that in my contract also. Which one would you pick one, sir? You have a choice of three, multiple choice. Oh, no, well, I'll just, I'll just talk to my wife then, you know. Okay, could you get back to me by 1230 and let's resolve this like gentlemen? Yeah, yeah. Thank 12, you. You're a, good, you're a good man. 1230. Boom. Off the role play. That's kind of what I sound like there. A little, I, you know, I like to have fun and stuff, but um, that, that's what, that's the importance of having a signed, notarized, dated, sufficient consideration contract. Okay, guys. And, and Thank you. you. Go right back to the contract. Correct. Oh, say that again. Uh, that was, oh, that was brilliant. Always. Oh, it's music. That. Beautiful. You, you go right back to the contract. No, I'm, that's Amen. Not, that's not an option because the contract says, remember when you signed it yesterday, it was notarized, et cetera. Exactly. You, you know what, Nathan? I forgot to put that in there. And thanks to you, that is now in the notes. Thank you. Always go You're back welcome, to the con. They will talk of my wife's mad at me. My dogs aren't looking at me. Uh, you know, we they're going to give you a lot of stuff. Who And this is a tough, this is a pragmatic business decision. In business, who comes first? Your family, when you made a commitment, you gave him money or consideration, you made promises that you fulfilled and he wants to renege on the contract, whose family comes first, yours or his? Mine, mine. This is, this is, there are exceptions to this, okay? I don't wanna sound like I'm a hard guy at Christmas. There are certain exceptions to this, okay? I had a guy, no, I had a guy once and his wife became deathly ill and, he, and it was true, it was, I, it was verified and everything. I let, I let him, and this just happened within 72 hours, I let him out of the contract because I, you know when they're telling the truth sometimes. Yeah, you're a good guy, yeah. Was, I was being a good, and I, you know, frankly, I, I knew I could turn over the property to someone else very quick, which I did. So once in a while, you've got to be a human being, okay? But a lot of times people just have remorse for no reason, and you're, you've expended funds. So th this, is a, this is a good ethics conversation, uh, basically. I, I had a guy die of a heart attack. And, and and so I his widow I just I man I let her go I let her have, just out of the deal because because of her situation that was a crazy crazy experience you know the, uh, got a moral thing uh, the one thing my wife and I talk about several times a week is gratefulness uh, we've had a good year financially my kids are good they're, they're healthy they're working they haven't moved back home. Um, <laughs> they're uh you know we're healthy uh, my my mother-in-law 93 almost 94 years old is healthy uh, my uh, you know um the business is working well and the cable bill is paid and we're gonna have mac and cheese with bacon bits sorry vegans uh for dinner tonight um so you know be grateful and so when you get a, an exceptional situation uh do the thing that lets you sleep at night that's all. Sorry, I got more. I got on a soapbox there. Um, let's talk about strategies here for a moment. Um, a guts move. Time. Uh, always use the time frame expiration date of the offer. When I was talking to Bill before in that great role play, thank you, Bill, that we were doing. What did I say about the time frame? Always time frame. Always. When you make your offers with a contract specifically say that I want that contract returned. I want it signed on or before this specific date and use the time too. You know, guy, why are we in business? I got to say it. I'm sorry. Why are we in business? To make money today. Oh God. It's like, a, it's, this is my church right now. Thank you. Amen. Can I have an amen? That was beautiful. Amen, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Okay, so always set a time frame, uh, the date and the time frame. So, if Bill, if I get you that contract and we got, let's have another Zoom discussion, can you sign it to, and get it back to me today, and we can move forward with this? Or you can say no to me right now. Why do I always? By the way, why do I always throw in that it's okay to say no to me? Why is that so important in the guts psychology? That, that mm -hmm. negative phrase and makes them say that want to say the opposite a lot of times. Thank you. The pendulum and a clock. What did Isaac Newton say? I think it was Newton. Maybe it was Pythagoras. Uh, all things, opposite, in, yeah. things in motion. Stay in motion. Stay in motion. Was that Newton? Somebody help me out. You guys stay are stay in motion. motion. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You. Oh, now here's a biggie. This is pure guts. 
Okay, got a lot of gurus with a lot of contracts. I even have contracts in it, just so you can see the passage, the different paragraphs they use. What do you think has more veracity in court? Your um, a, a contract that you did on a bar napkin at the Chuck E. Cheese Pizza Palace or a contract from your specific state that is state approved, Department of Real Estate approved? State approved. State approved. Why? When the judge sees that, do you think he's going to, do you think a judge wants to read your guru of the month contract that was written on with crayons? No. Okay. He doesn't want to read that whole thing. He's going to be, a, right away, you're going to turn the judge off when they see some of these garbage contracts that some of these gurus have. Use state approved contracts. Why? Because he knows somebody else approved it in the chain of command. You already have one up on the, pro, on the defendant. Okay, or in that case, um, keep your contract short. Kiss why? Because it's easier for them to sign it. You know what? What's the one thing the uh, the one stalling objection a lot of prospects use? Oh, I got to take this to my attorney and, and and all that, right? What what happens? Role play with me. Give me some, Felipe. Role play with me, buddy. Uh, well, you know, that, that, that offer seems good. I, I just took a look at the DocuSign you just sent me, and but I have to really take it on to my attorney because I need to, it's like a 15 page long contract and I'm, I'm just want to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm not making any mistakes okay. here. I'm sorry. Off the role play. That's what the amateur will do. Now, suppose I sent you the Claude Diamond two or three page short contract. Okay, and the state, your states do have short offer forms, by the way. Don't look for the yes. page, uh, state. look for the short offer forms. And you can always add, this is important, you can always add an addendum or in a miscellaneous column, the, some of the things that we're talking about today. You can always add other things to them. Right of assignment, um, extension clauses, right of first refusal. You can put those in manually to those contracts. But if you're using a state-approved form, you've got a lot of uh, you got a lot of good mojo working for you. Felipe, back in the role play. Felipe, my contract is two and a half pages. It's in uh, 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 eighteen size font. Um, I, uh, you know, you're, you strike me as a pretty you're a pretty well educated young man. Um, I think. I try. If you want to go to your attorney, I have no problem with it, but that might cost you five hundred to three thousand dollars. Would you like to save some money today? I mean, I could go over it paragraph by crap paragraph. It is just the price, the terms, the time frame, the subject matter, um, the dates, how much rent I'm going to pay you, how much option consideration and my signature and yours. And we're done. Or you can pay your attorney. It's up to you. Oh, well, you know what? I'll be honest with you. You know, this no, is the first don't, time please, that... Don't, don't be honest. Please don't start now. <laughs> yeah, well, 115% uh, honest. Just um, just uh, real quick. I This is the first time that... And this is happening just way too fast. You know, it's, it's our first call. My, you just send me the DocuSign. I know. I remember my first time too. It's a little nerve wracking, isn't it? I totally understand. Tell you what, you know, uh, why don't we go on Zoom? You look it over. We'll go on Zoom an hour from now, and let's just go through every paragraph step by step. And if you're not comfortable at that point, then bring it to your attorney. Mm, I, I think I can do that. You think? I might be able to possibly do that. Might possibly? Yeah, highly likely that I might be able to do it that way. I, highly likely. What is it going to What do I need to do to get you to yes, sir? It's a simple question. <laughs> Let's just do it at 430. But I'll just I'll, again, if I don't like what I see, I'm still going to have to bring it up to my attorney and it's going to and if it's OK with you, we're going to be doing this after Christmas. Well, the, sir, no, we're going to have to make it go work today or you can fire me. Is that OK? We're either going to do a deal today or it's over by 630 today. Not trying to pressure so you. You're not trying to pressure well, you. Sir. This is the way I roll. I'm sorry, I've got too many deals. I am too busy. You've got a problem. I got a, I'm got solving it. I'm giving, we negotiated the terms. If you're not comfortable after today and all the time we've spent, then it's over. Oh man, I'm feeling a lot of pressure. You should. <laughs> I love it. Okay, let's just do it at 4.30. I'll give you a yes or a no and we'll decide then. How about that? Very good. Give him a round. That was a damn good. He gave me, a, he threw everything in the, except the kitchen sink at me there. Yeah, the, 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 the University of Wishy Washiness, guys. Just get ready for it because it's going to happen.
There we go. Was that being a bully or assertive? You're just assertive, Claude. So that's what you just do when you just push hard to say you don't let them bully you. Okay. At the end, at your last day on the planet, when you're 120 years old, are you going to remember all the bullshit prospects and the renegs and everything like that? Or are you going to waste your life on, on people? Or are you going to go for it and get the life you deserve today? Yeah. I see. Oh, and, and I mean, what you said, Nathan, makes sense because he wasn't pushing me. He was using, he was applying the, 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 the science of persuasion and more, more like that, he was pulling me towards him because he's like hey listen i'm just too busy between two uh, a lot of yeah. other deals instead of saying yes sir whatever you say i uh, just send it to your attorney get back to me after new years and we all know how that ends yeah instead of that he was like he was a blind scarcity he was also using social proof by saying we're either going to do business or it's over or and you can fire me but i never felt uncomfortable because i always had a way out it was okay for me to say no and therefore I'm like, okay, let's just play by your rules. Let's have that call at 430. And that's exactly how it works in, in real estate and in, in like real life deals. That's exactly how it works. Some prospects, it might turn them off. They might feel that pressure, but guess what? Who needs to take responsibility? It's us. Yeah. It's us. Right. We <laughs> because it means that we're not good thespians on it. Yeah. We, we, yes. Um, we got to move faster here. Um, for, uh, one of my favorite, uh, uh, let's see here, keep the contract short, force majeure, okay? This is a way to get out of the contract. Sometimes we wanna get out of a contract, right? What happened in 2008? You bought a property for 200,000 under a lease purchase. It dropped down to 150, 125. Do you wanna get out of that contract? Yes, you can use a force majeure. We don't have time for this today, but this is a very, uh, everybody Google force majeure or read my notes on it later today. I'll send this all to you. Force majeure is an unexpected event. Okay, Do, um, our, our president, uh, Donald Trump used it for Trump, uh, uh, for his Trump casinos in Atlantic City when we had that big uh, 2008, I think it was. And all the banks were calling in the notes and he used the force majeure clause in his contract to keep the wolves from the door and force them to renegotiate with him. It's a very powerful oh. thing. You can, you, could you use the pandemic? I, in my legal opinion, yes. If you want to get out of a contract today, the pandemic would be a perfect force majeure use of that paragraph. Um, you could use a, a depression, stock market crash, civil unrest, a lot of different things. Sometimes you need to anticipate that you might want to get out of a contract. Write a first refusal. Sometimes we're negotiating with somebody who has a property. They've done a deal with a realtor or somebody else. Would you like still to keep in, would you like to have the opportunity legally for them to come to you and do the deal with you first? For a, a right of first approval is a great is a great way to do um, is a great paragraph to have in there. Clauses, real fast here, going to different things. Uh, extension clauses. All your contracts should always have an extension clause. Why? Because sometimes we run out of ta time. Did you ever have a an option agreement, or you're doing a wholesale deal and you've run out of time on your contract with the original owner? You need another week, another day, or another month. Bear, put in there an extension clause you, and give sufficient consideration so you can get that extra week or day or month. Has anyone here ever run out of time? You had a buyer, but the clock ran out and the seller was not cooperating with you and give you that extension. Put that in your agreement. Okay. Uh, one of the things, is that, a, is that a comment, that cuckoo clock I'm hearing there? Yeah. <laughs> Um, make sure a lot of these paragraphs, by the way, are initialed, okay? Initial every separate sheet on the bottom. And on some paragraphs, if you want, you can have them initial next to the, uh, the important clauses too. Um, attorney fees. Most states require, if you do not have an attorney's fees clause in your contract, you cannot regain your fees that you spent. So make sure that's in your agreements also. Uh, choose your state and venue. Make sure if I live in Colorado, when I do deals, if I'm going to do a deal in Florida, which state do I want to put, uh, do I want to utilize my civil rights in? Florida or Colorado? I'd rather have it in Colorado. It's cheaper, isn't it, to do the to do it in my state? I might still do it in theirs, but I want to have a cho choose your own state and venue that show that that will protect you best. Sometimes judgment. Hey, uh, hold on. Some question, Claude. Sorry. 
sometimes ju sometimes judgments can be transferred to other states depending on your state. Go ahead there, Brandon. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Do, do, when it comes to real estate, do we have to choose the state that the house is in? Um, it might depend on the state law. Okay, different states okay. have different laws. Um, you know what? Check the check the law in your state if they're you know just check uh, check uh, what would you do? You could call up your Department of Real Estate, by the way, and you can add, you can get free legal advice for just that kind of question in the state you're doing the deal in. So if you're in California, you're doing a deal in Ohio, call up the Ohio Department of Real Estate and say, can I choose the state of venue for legal action on a real estate contract or do I have to do it in Ohio? Okay, uh, indemnify. Make sure that if you have, you have a property and you're renting to own it and your tenants are in that property and they're dealing drugs or stealing or doing something bad and naughty, Make sure you're ident indemnified that you're not, you are not liable for their actions, even though you put them in the property. Indemnify yourself. We could spend a session just on that. I have some very good notes here. Make sure you read it. Insurance. Should we get the pro should we get the tenant to have insurance? Tenants insurance, rent insurance. If it's it's not a bad thing to get on a, on a high-end property. Make sure you have an entire agreement form and make sure you have a severability form. If any particular part of a contract, like we were just, what Brandon just brought up, say you put something in the contract that's illegal or something like that, but make sure that the rest of the contract is legal and that one specific paragraph does not make the entire contract null and void. That's a severability clause. Sorry, I'm going so fast, but we're really, we're out of time here. Um, um, letters of intent. Sometimes you want to send a letter to some. Uh, you want to send a letter to somebody. A short preliminary offer. A letter of intent. If it has Q-tips in it and it is signed and dated and bound by consideration, could be considered a contract. Okay, but most cases, a letter of intent is a preliminary offer. Or okay, it's 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 not. It's just a. It's just to get everything on on paper send it to the prospect and set yourself up for a second meeting to negotiate the actual contract. I use prospectuses. Um, uh, basically, when, I make a, when I'm selling a contract to somebody, I put together a prospectus with uh, the contract, pictures, um, marketability study, profitability estimate. It can be a short video. It can be a drone video. I want to sell this to another person. So I want to put together a beautiful brochure or what I call a prospectus so that I can sell this proper. So I can send it to the, uh, the, uh, the investor or whoever I'm the assignee that I'm selling the contract to. Um, that's, a, that's something next year I think we'll spend some time on. Um, I mentioned this before. I use HelloSign because it has ties with Dropbox. And uh, DocuSign is also very good. So if you um, make, make sure you watch out, they have sometimes they give great discounts, especially uh, just uh, Black Friday, they just did it, where they cut their prices in half. So look for those kind of discounts on it. Uh, finally, um, let's talk about evictions. Um, you, wanna, you wanna kick them out quick. But in some states, it is very, very difficult to kick somebody out, especially now with the pandemic. The best way to get somebody out of the property while you're still talking, you know, they're coming to you. I don't have the money. I lost my job. Boo. You know, they do the boo-hoo stuff, right? Okay. Offer them money to get them out. Now, that might grind your back teeth. But it's the smart move because by the time they're done trashing the property or the government, the Soviet Socialist State of Southern California is protecting them, or they've been in the property for three, six months up to a year, okay, because they're using all the legal, they know the law system too. There's some pretty sharp uh, professional tenants out there. Offer them money to get out. But when you offer them money, don't just give it to them. Make them sign a voluntary abandonment and or quit claim to get and make sure that you have a, a notary public once again. Make sure you have a locksmith. Change the utilities to your own name. Put in an alarm system or what I use is a wise camera. W-Y-Z-E, little cat so you can watch the property and make sure they clean the property before you give them the money. So, and they sign in a contract notarized 
you change the locks, um, you put in security system, you make them clean it, and they have to hand you the keys and everybody is out of the property before you hand them the, before you hand them the money. Okay, protect, you've got to anticipate that they're going to move right back in or break in or something like that. So you've got to protect yourself in all ways. You might even want to hire a security guard for $50, $100 to escort you uh, on this. So this is another great topic uh, we'll discuss on some Monday. Woo! I am, that was Contracts 101. I, I, sorry if I talked fast, but I, I wanted to get, thank you for the thumbs up, Robert. Um, was there something useful for you guys here? I know I, I covered a lot of stuff very, very fast.